If you are in the process of applying any visa category, whether it's a student visa, tourist visa, skill visa, or any other visa, make sure you watch the video till the end because we will be covering the top five reasons of visa refusal so that you don't repeat those mistakes and can get your visa done in your first shot. Again, I'm not doing this video on my own. I have invited Yash from AYNJ Solicitors who is going to provide his in-depth knowledge of visa refusal and how you can avoid it. So if this topic is of any use to you, make sure to watch the video till the end. Hello guys, I'm Sarika and welcome to Your Knowledge Buddy. Before I move to my next agenda, if you're moving to the UK either for study or work purpose, make sure you open your UK personal bank account from India itself. You can reach out to ICIC Bank, UK PLC and open your UK personal bank account so that the moment you land in the UK, you can start using your debit card to withdraw cash from any bank's ATM without any charges and use it for your day-to-day -day activities like grocery shopping, transport and online shopping, etc. Remember, you will not earn any interest on your UK personal account. So to get interest, you will have to open your savings account in the UK. ICIC Bank UK PLC will help you with that too. Also, if you wish to send money to India like me, their iMobile UK app helps you do it instantly where you get a real-time exchange rate without any hidden charges and 20 4 by 7 free customer call center support. So download ICIC Bank UK iMobile app and start opening your UK personal bank account now. Check the link in my video description and pin comment. If you want to study abroad, make sure to fill the Google form because my team can help you free of cost. So without any further delay, let me introduce you guys to Yash. Hi Yash, welcome again to Your Knowledge Buddy. Hi Sharika, how are you? Good. Uh, Yash, if you don't mind, can you please introduce yourself again to my audience? Sure, my name is Yash Dubal, Managing Director of Evangelist Just Listers, a multi award winning legal 500 with over a decade in UK immigration specialized law firm in the UK, yes. So, yes, today's topic is all about the rejection, UK visa sure. rejection. It can be any visa category. So from your expertise, because you have been helping so many people to process their visa. So from your experience of being in this industry, can you just help us or explain us the reasons that you have seen why the visas are being rejected? Absolutely. So... We have served over 4,000 clients. So this is based on that experience. There are five reasons, core reasons, which we found here and there. And probably that might help your audience to be prepared uh, for any potential refusal. So number one is credibility and genuineness. And this can apply in any application. So let's take a widely, you know, submit application visit visa. Uh, what is the credibility and genuineness? Why do you want to visit the UK? you know, exact purpose, just be truthful, honest, and provide some evidence behind your reasoning. Spouse visa application, let's say you are in relationship, which is which which must be a subsisting genuine relationship. How can you prove that? Of course, you will provide marriage certificate, but can you also provide some ongoing communication between uh, yourself and your, your spouse or partner? So that's number one. Just demonstrate some, you know, absolute credibility and genuineness about your application. So that's one. Number two is financial inadequacy. And, and this is, again, quite common visit visa refusal all across the board from anywhere in the, in, in, in the world. Uh, you, you have to have some, you know, uh, sufficient funds to support your potential proposed visit to the UK. Now, this has been replaced in point-based system with maintenance requirement, which is like £1,270 uh, for 28 days generally. You know, it does change up and down depending on the visa category. It's been replaced now. So you, you must meet this financial requirement for any application. So let's say spouse visa. Uh, and generally, you know, the, your, your spouse should have been earning 18600 per annum. So not meeting this financial adequacy is this the another uh, most common reason of refusal and the way you can mitigate that by providing enough evidence of financial adequacy means you provide your supporting bank statements if it's spouse visa then pay slips and bank statement together for last six months letter from employer helps as well um if you are submitting, let's say, visit visa application, then of course the your income tax return. If you are self-employed, your 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 letter from employer, pay slips, and last three to six months of bank statement. This is how you can meet the requirement. Number three reason is the incomplete or inaccurate documentation. And what I mean by that is, 
for an example, when, when there is an English line, this is very common and this is a practical tip to your audience, Sarika, uh, and many lawyers, they do make mistakes, so very important one. Let's say you are submitting IELTS, I-E-L-T-S, as one of the secure English language tests in English language requirement. Now, that has to be for UKVI. How would you find that? When you book the test, you must book the, the English language test for IELTS for UKVI. And if you don't choose that option, even if you have passed the relevant band, you will still be refused because that test is not for UKVI. So you can find that UKVI reference number on the IELTS test itself. And if it's not there, that, that doesn't mean. That means it's inaccurate document. So I've seen a lot of application getting, and it's very silly, very heartbroken as well for us to see those sort of refusal because very, it, it can be easily mitigated by making sure you submit the right document and the right information. Complete your form. Your, your form has to be very factual. Um, at times, overseas, people do use agents to complete their application. My recommendation is they must understand the content of the form. When, when they submit in the local language. And, and, and if this is a quite common uh, refusal is, uh, uh, have you ever been refused before? And the agent will go on to say no, when there has been a refusal. So it, it has to be factual. Now having a previous refusal does not mean you won't get the visa this time. But if you don't mention that, definitely it's guaranteed refusal because now you are being dishonest with your application and your application will fall for refusal under dishonesty and that's dangerous because then it also attracts a ban for next 10 years so please make sure your application is complete and accurate with the relevant document the fourth document is failure to meet the eligibility requirement what it means is let's say going back to the spouse visa application you have to have meet this 18600 financial requirement or let's say a, a skilled worker visa you must meet the the english language requirement or let's say if you are coming from a specific country like india pakistan bangladesh and if you want to apply for a visa more than six months you must have tuberculosis test if you haven't done before uh, so that's like submitting and meeting the eligibility requirement uh, and the last and final is adverse immigration history what it means is um, you have been deported, might have been deported, some people might have been deported before or have overstayed in the UK uh, or were breached in their immigration condition before. So that's quite common refusal. Again, it doesn't mean it's a hundred percent no no stopper, like you know, short stopper. No, it's not. Because if you overstayed, then you can potentially reapply after a one year from the date of departure to the UK. So that's very important. But you need to know your dates as to when you were deported or when you 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 stopped overstaying, you left the UK. Then you can plan your next application accordingly and you can reapply and, and get the visa sorted. So these are the five top reason of refusal I wanted to cover for your audience, Sarika, today and happy to answer any follow-up question you might have. Yes, I had been making some notes here while you were explaining. So first question is about overstay. Why do you think there's there should be a gap of one year and then they can apply? Do you think the UK government, they don't maintain that history or they say, okay, be away for one year, but now you can apply? What does it mean? It's just the simple immigration rule. Uh, um, it, that's the to, to answer your question, it's just the immigration rule, Sarika. The, the way the, the government has, uh, uh, you know, it's just the rule that it's in the immigration rules. So I don't have much to comment, but the way I would see that is kind of a rehabilitation period, right? Uh, so yes, you overstayed, but you know, we'll allow you to reapply after a year, not, not before a year. So yeah, that's how I would see that. Okay, and they need to mention that in the application that they overstayed in the UK. Absolutely. Okay. Honesty is the best policy. If if the audience wants to take away one point from this entire video, I would say honesty is the best policy. Make it factual. You won't regret it. My other question is regarding the point one where you were saying provide enough evidence that you were a spouse of this person on basis of which you are applying the visa. So you mentioned about, of course, you will submit the marriage certificate. You talked about the communication. So what kind of communication do you think? Email or even WhatsApp chat? Do you think those communications or phone call history, do we have to submit that? Yes, please. So um, any sort of communication is fine. These days, everybody, you know, discuss and, and, and stay in touch through WhatsApp. So you can take a screenshot of the WhatsApp calls 
to to demonstrate that you've been you've been in touch with each other uh, you can also try and take the extract of your whatsapp chat history of course there might be some private and confidential uh, uh, chat which you don't want to share which is perfectly fine but you can uh, uh, take the part of of the chat history which you are comfortable sharing with the uk government to prove that there is a, a subsisting relationship i.e it's an ongoing relationship any other document you think they should submit other than communication and the photos and marriage certificate photos uh, a marriage certificate chat history is is more than enough in my experience till date but if they want to go a, a, a step forward then probably the letters from their family friends uh, uh, you know, supporting their relationship or the nature of their relationship and the duration of their relationship might help. Um, if you want to go a step forward, which is, in my view, it's unnecessary, then you can take a letter from someone who has who is having a professional standing in the society again to watch the, the credibility uh, uh, and genuineness of the relationship. Uh, but I'm big fan of of doing just enough. Uh, you know, uh, I don't try and. Uh, put too much information because uh, in all honesty, the, the immigration officers are very, very, very busy. Uh, you know, they don't have time to look through like 100 kg of document. You might submit just enough, right? Just enough. Uh, uh, don't submit like uh, 10 kg of, you know, chat history. Uh, it will just overwhelm the officer. Just submit enough. Maybe 15, 20 pages is enough. Um, thank you, Yash. The next question is about insufficient funds. So for irrespective of any visa category, wherever there is a need for to show a minimum fund, other than your bank statement, what else people can show? Like, is it uh, a fixed deposit? Like in India, we have fixed deposit state, uh, system. So can they also show that? Really good question. And the answer, again, based on my practical experience of last 14 years, yes, they can only if the bank can write a letter because every fixed deposit, Sarika, has a bank account number attached to it, right? And it's, if it's, it is a regulated bank abroad, it can be used. And this is how it can be done. So get a letter from the bank where the bank can say the specific account has maintained the specific amount of, of funds for last 28 days or 90 days, whatever is applicable. If they can write that letter in a specific format, which is again on the UKVI policy guidance, then it can satisfy the requirement. So that's the number one alternate option for applicants. Uh, and number two is, let's say if they're applying for skilled worker visa, do not hesitate to ask your employer to certify your maintenance. If they just certify the maintenance, they can tick one box while assigning CUS, certificate of sponsorship, and then they don't need to submit any financial document uh, or, or maintenance document. Uh, if they haven't done that, they can always add a sponsor note. Just say, look, we certify the maintenance for this applicant, and then that can be also be helpful. If they haven't done so, they can also do a sponsor note after even assigning the CUS. So that's another one. Uh, the bank loan letter works in, in certain circumstances for student visas. So that is also an option. The another option for student is for if they haven't maintained the funds, then they can pay off the fees, you know, full fees to, to their relevant institution, including their accommodation fees. And if they get a confirmation that's been paid and, and then there is no maintenance requirement to satisfy because they would have paid everything upfront, including accommodation. So that's another alternate idea I can share to mitigate uh, uh, not having the maintained bank uh, statements, which which we do come, come across now and then, yes. So another follow-up question on that. So again, irrespective of any visa category, say whoever is the main applicant here, can they also submit a joint bank statement? Say if I have a joint bank with my dad and I'm applying, I don't know, just say tourist visa or a student visa, can I still show that as a genuine bank statement? Absolutely, yes as long as you have the, the equal control over those funds. Okay. So as long as you have a control, full control over the bank account, you can, of course, use that even if it's in a joint account. Yes, those were my questions. Thank you very much for being so patient with me and answering all these questions. And Pleasure. for the guys who are watching this video, I hope this was useful. So please be mindful of all the reasons which Yash has covered now. And if you guys need any help or support from Yash, his details are provided on the screen and also on the video description. And you can reach out to Yash for any legal advice on any immigration related topics. Thank you, Yash. Thank you for coming and recording this video with me. Thank you so much, Farika. Thank you. Thank you.